This is Whiskey Whereabouts, I'm Tim, and this is the Laphroaig Quarter Cask. It is a non-age statement Laphroaig that costs more than the 10-year. Why? Well, it has a better presentation, but is it also maybe the Laphroaig for those of us who don't love Laphroaig 10-year? Let's check it out. My whiskey journey has taken me to Scotland and back. I've explored whiskey education, tastings, and distilleries from Isla to Speyside. And now my journey continues here, with you, on Whiskey Whereabouts. I've talked about it on the channel before. I don't love the Laphroaig 10-year. For one, it has a terrible presentation. 43%, chill filtered, color added, like most of the Laphroaigs. Um, but I really think that Laphroaig, which can be really fantastic if it's aged well enough, needs more time in the cast than the 10-year. That really, really dominant medicinal note is just out of balance for me on the standard 10-year. So enter the quarter cask. We believe it's between five and six years, less than seven years old. This is a much better presented whiskey than the 10-year. It's 48% non-chill filter. Still color added because so many of those Laphroaigs are colored. But the trick is in this quarter cask. This whiskey goes into uh, bourbon casks, so standard maturation, and at some point gets transferred and finished in quarter casks, which are exactly what they sound like. They are one quarter the volume casks, they're smaller. What does that do? It increases the ratio of oak to liquid during the maturation process, and this basically works as a turbocharger on the uh, timeline of the maturation. You mature the whiskey faster. Not exactly the same, but you're getting to a destination much quicker than with the standard maturation. So in the case of this whiskey, we have a whiskey that hasn't spent the full 10 years in the warehouse, let alone more than the 10 years that I'm usually seeking with Laphroaig. But will the quarter casks make up the difference? This review came about because I was going in the back of the whiskey closet, um, found this bottle sort of behind some others, and I had it out for a tasting flight for another video that's coming in the future and realized that I've never actually reviewed this whiskey on the channel. And the bottle has been open more than six months. Not a year, but that is um, long enough to, to have, have sat and not have been reviewed. I felt like it was now or never. I have done some experiments with um, the aging of open whiskey over six month, one year timelines, peated Isla whiskey. If you haven't seen my video uh, about that with uh, bottles of Ardbeg 10 year, I'll put the link right up here and you can check it out. So going in on the nose with the quarter cask, neat. And the first thing that hits me is buttery. Buttery and that sea salt. It's not very hot. There's something there, some substance, 48%, but it's playing very, very mild. Fruit, red berry, sweet, pretty rich. Yeah, going in another level deeper, lemon, citrus. There's fruit. Now it's orchard fruit, apple, caramel, candy apple. There's not much in the way of the smoke for this sort of really well-known smoky, big, I love PD kind of distillery, right? There's a little tiny bit of ashiness, but it's all pretty settled. It's more like a, a sensation. It's more like a toasty warmth around all those flavors than a smoke or real intense sort of peat, fiery kind of note. What haven't I mentioned yet? I haven't mentioned that big medicinal note. And so I'm going back in, I'm looking for it. I know what I'm nosing here. And yeah, all the way at the bottom, if I go looking for it, yeah, there's that medicinal sort of real clean kind of uh, medicinal cabinet note buried down in the mix where for me, I think it should be balanced out with these other flavors. Next, we go in on the palate. Yeah, palate has that really solid uh, mouth feel and it is vanilla cream sweet as it arrives sweet first. It's not the most complicated palate. You do have the smoke now. Here it comes. Now we've got the big peated whiskey um, quality. You have the sort of wave of the smoke then it kind of transitions into the ash, 
then it kind of, as it develops into a coffee ground kind of bitter, once you can kind of pick up after that first wave of the smoke is starting to sort of dissipate, now you're getting that cask playing with it, I think, and it's giving you that sensation. It's not very hot on the palate. It's very, very drinkable, neat. Going back very quickly for the finish now, solidly long like you expect it to be for the style of whiskey. It's all smoke on that finish. Each successive stage here, it's gotten smokier, it's gotten peatier. You've got the smoke in the sinus, you've got the ash on the tongue once it sort of arrives. Then, as it's developing through that finish, a nice pop of that caramel, sweet, cutting it. And as it kind of trails off, you've got a little bit of that sort of casky bitter. That oak is pretty present on the middle of the tongue. The ghost of the sort of vanilla caramel is kind of around. And you do get just that tiny little sort of garnish level of that sort of maybe that medicinal if you're looking for Lafroigi quality. It's kind of almost in the sinus following behind the smoke. A very solid, very nice finish. Makes you want to reach and uh, go for the next sip. The experience of this whiskey is not calling out for water. The 48 is, uh, is, is, is right where it needs to be, I, I think, uh, for this whiskey. But I am gonna just hit it with some water very quickly just to see if it opens up anything new. Uh, in this sort of profile. I'm gonna give it a nice healthy little dose. He'll still have some decent uh, pour left. Let this sit for a minute and then I will go in with the water. Going in on the nose with the water now. This was not, this is not the most complex whiskey that you've ever had. The nose was the most complex of the three stages. Yeah, unfortunately with the water, I'd say it's kind of washed out. It's kind of butter cookie, tiny bit of ash, a little bit of that sort of cherry berry sweet, some vanilla, really no heat, obviously. Not really doing anything new here, not really worth the watering down, but let's see on the palate. It's a pretty robust whiskey. It's standing up to the water nicely. That vanilla sort of creamy kind of uh, palate is now getting a little bit of a boost, whereas some of the, the peat and the cask stuff is a little bit turned down on the finish very quickly. Yeah, I think I'm getting now more of the fruit sweet. It's a little cherry uh, on the finish, and uh, there's a lot, there's a lot of the smoke still. Smoke's everywhere, the ash is everywhere, but it's not as, as much of that sort of caramel sweet. I'm getting a little bit more of a cherry sweet. The medicinal is kind of there, and in that collision, I'm, I am getting a little just because it's Laphroaig and just because I'm sensitive to it, I think I am getting a little cough syrupy um, with all the smoke. It's not as rich to me as the neat finish, uh, which is more of a caramel sweet. For me, the water really isn't doing any good here. And it's, and it's kind of stripping away some, I think, what these uh, turbocharged quarter casks have brought in to the whiskey. So before I share my review of this whiskey, just want to remind you uh, that you can follow us over on Instagram at Whiskey Abouts. The shop's open over at whiskeywhereabouts.com slash shop. And in the case of this whiskey, if you were shopping for it, you would likely pay uh, a little over $70, about $10 probably more than you could expect to pay for the tenure. Remember, the tenure has that trash presentation, that 43% with the chill filtration. This is a much, much better whiskey to me than the 10 year, uh, despite you having to pay a little bit more for a non age statement whiskey that's definitely younger than the 10 year and very, very, very likely younger than Lagavulin like 8 year, which is a really solid comparison for this whiskey. So, the younger version, they all cost almost the exact same amount and they are better presented. They're both 48% whiskeys. Uh, than the sort of um, more well-known standard uh, older presentation. And for me, this whiskey is a uh, very, very solid um, entry-level Isla whiskey that does all the things that um, you want it or need it to do without being too complicated. And so I'm going to say that this is on its merits a four-glass whiskey. Now, when we're talking about value, I don't think this is a particularly great value whiskey, even if it's still not 
a too expensive whiskey. What I mean by that is it's the same price as the Lagavulin 8 year, which has an age statement, and it is still within a couple of dollars of the Port Charlotte 10 year. And, and with the, the Port Charlotte 10 year is head and shoulders above this whiskey. It's also 50% and it has a 10 year age statement for $2, $3 more probably, depending on where you are shopping. So I'm not gonna say this is a huge bargain whiskey, but I'm also not gonna say it's overpriced. It's better, it's just straight up better than the 10 year. And it's comparably priced to a more sort of appropriate sort of comparison with that eight year. It's more expensive than the Ardbeg 10 year, which does everything that you know you probably can expect from this whiskey but is a 46 percent whiskey so i'm gonna leave it right there uh, factoring the value i think the value it's it's sort of neutral in terms of value and i'm gonna leave it as a four glass whiskey even factoring in the value and if you uh had a lot of value in this video make sure that you subscribe you can press this big button that's coming up right over here so you don't miss any of the videos that are coming in the future got one coming up with this one in a tasting flight you're not going to miss that i will see you on the next one